Welcome everyone to uh, Talking Sports. Actually, it's 2020, so Happy New Year. This is the first our first show of the new year. And what better way to do it? My name's Andy Porio, by the way. I'm your host. Uh, what we're going to do is something different. We're going to start the new, new year off the right way. Uh, how about fitness, health and fitness? And I'm not the expert here, but I did bring somebody in alongside of me. His name is Mike Foley of Foley's uh, Fitness. And uh, Mike's coming along here, and we're going to... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about health and fitness, about Mike's background, and about this gym. First of all, welcome. Mike. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for coming in. I want to mention before we even uh, get going that we are in the smoothie doctor room. Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is nice. So if you don't think we're at a fitness center, we are. We're not at a, at a <laughs> restaurant ready to go. And we just had uh, Aggie, the famous smoothie doctor here, <laughs> make us an incredible, credible drink that I want to thank her for. She, yep. she did a great job with oh, this Oh, yeah, drink. she's talented. She's yes. very talented, and she's pretty, but that's another <laughs> show. But anyways, uh, but, you know, come on in. If you ever fo uh, Foley's Fitness, come on in and have a smoothie. Ag Aggie and, and, and the other doctors will we'll fix you up a good drink. Yes. Before we start, uh, I want to Mike, – Mike is a uh, – let's see. Let's see if I get this right. I know it's only – it's less than a two-hour show, but he's a, uh, uh, a husband, a father, uh, was a bodybuilder. Uh, is a, uh, a former, I, I would say, an athlete, uh, an author, an author, yep. and now he's the owner of a uh, a nice fitness center here in Scarborough called Foley's Fitness. I know there's got to be more, uh, but did I get most of that right? Yeah, I would say, uh, yep. I mean, basically, I've always been into working out and fitness and health. Right. Yes, right. yep. Because most those, of my life, yep. if there was a couple more titles, we're gonna have to end the show right <laughs> here because it would have been a one-hour limit. That would have been it. But he's a man of many hats and stuff. I want I just mentioned the word title. Book book and title. You know what? I got this book. We're not gonna go this would be a two hour interview in itself, but I'm gonna recommend this because I did skim through. I didn't read it word for word, but I did skim it. I'm I'm gonna tell I'm gonna show you this book. It's called Eat to Be Fit. And it was co authored, I believe, by yourself and Pat Walsh. Yep, yeah, Pat Walsh helped me with the writing shoes. Right. Very talented writer. And that was right, two thousand two, right? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Long time <laughs> ago. And uh Forwarded by Dr. Christopher Brigham, uh, MD. Yep. So this this is a, a must read because I went through it and I was really impressed. I'm going to be reading a small section in a few minutes about this book. So I'd recommend this. You won't need another diet book or a fitness and nutrition book. Am I right? Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to keep reading a lot yeah. of different opinions. But um, yeah. thank you. I appreciate oh, it's that. Very. I, I I'm going to write. I'm not a book reader. But I, I went in this, yeah. I couldn't put it down. I kept going to sections. I was infatuated by it, where I'm going to end up reading the whole thing eventually. Oh, thank so you. You got my word on that. Uh, so a little bit about uh, your now, uh, your background. You grew up in Portland? I grew up in Westbrook, actually. Oh, you grew up in Westbrook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you went to uh, Portland, Westbrook High School? Westbrook High School, yeah. Okay. Now, did you, in your youth, or younger, in your teenage years, you play some sports? Yeah, I played sports growing up. You know, like, if you look at, like, high school sports, I was pretty much what you call the average athlete. Okay. You know, I played sports. I wasn't um, certainly anything. Um, I had an older brother. I had two older brothers that were really good athletes. Um, one of my brothers played uh, baseball at UMaine. My brother Jim was actually involved with me in the gym. Awesome. He played at the University of Maine baseball and basketball. Okay. So he was definitely the more talented. And I, I had an older brother, Kevin, who was a pretty good athlete, too. Okay. Now, so you were involved in sports. Your teenage years were involved in a, a, a little bit of weight training? Yes, I got into uh, working out at a very young age. My older brothers worked out, and they were like 10 and 19 years older than right. me. So uh, I used to go to the police station and work out with them. And then at a young age, I got involved in going to USM. And, um, you know, all the legends like Marty Joyce and Skip oh, yeah. Robinson were always very good to me. And uh, I've, I've always just loved working out. Now, uh Tell me if this was a game changer for you as far as lifting and getting more serious about uh, weightlifting and getting involved in fitness. Uh, 19, you injured a disc, ruptured a disc. Yeah, yeah, I was actually, I think, 18. And then I had surgery at age uh, 19, and I, uh, I had a, a really bad back surgery. I was in the hospital for a week. I uh, ruptured my disc and kind of had very bad back pain. And after that surgery, I lost a lot of weight and... Uh, kind of struggled with my workouts and my eating, and um, that's when I decided to make changes in my lifestyle. Right. And uh, so you, you ended up getting hurt, and uh, so you took, 
you lost a lot of weight, right? You yep. lost about 25 pounds. If yeah, I no, and I was little to begin with, yeah. Right, so and you lost you're down to about 125, and 130. Were, and you weren't getting the results at first? Or exactly, yeah. So you changed it up, right? Yeah, and that's when I just kind of, for the first time in my life, was unhappy with the way I looked yeah. to a degree enough to make changes. Okay. Now you're at that age now. You've got to make a decision, too, uh, about your, maybe your future. You're out of school. Mm -hmm. You're at that age where... Uh, Education-wise, comes in, yep. right? So yep. now you focus on nutrition, right? Yeah, I was basically going to school in business, and I, when I had the back surgery, I was supposed to be going to Long Beach State, okay. and I had back surgery, so I ended up going to USM, but just didn't really apply myself, kind of dropped out, went down to see my brother Jim in Texas, and went to a, a junior college, but kind of struggled with it until I, you know, I started get working as a gym as a trainer back then, yep. and really got more and more into nutrition, and decided to switch majors and went on to a degree with nutrition and right. then went further on to it after that. Now, you worked out uh, in your early days, uh, you worked out at Gold's Gym? You yes, yeah, I, I uh, worked out at Gold's Gym okay. in South Portland, Maine. I got a job as the nutritionist, um, working the nutrition dietetic program and uh, really got some good results, worked with some pretty good athletes. Yeah. They actually sometimes paid me to travel to work with the better bodybuilders and I got named in, uh, I think it was 92, uh, top diet technician yeah. in the Northeast. And uh, so it was, it was a good. They were, they were very good to me. And the, yep. Oh, go ahead. No, and it, and it was uh, a great way of kind of building my career. Right. Then I went on to my own, opened up my own business yeah. from there. 1994, right? Yep, yep, yeah, exactly. Foley Fitness? Yep. And uh, which the name comes from here, basically. Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. Now, uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, when did you get into did you get into bodybuilding at all? Yeah, uh, do yeah, I did. I did some bodybuilding competitions in the uh, early '90s, and uh, you know, did okay in them. Um, yeah. Nothing um, amazing, but I did good. Right. And I, uh, but I, I've always worked with a lot. Like a lot of times when I was working with people on their nutrition, yeah. they yeah. would end up winning the shows. So it kind of built my oh, my brand yeah. a little bit. And I was fortunate, you know, from when I approached the bank about building this gym. Yeah. Um, I had a list of over 20,000 clients I could show them. Wow. So it, I was really Quite a fortunate. resume there. Yeah, it was pretty good, and, and I've worked with all different types of people. Right. Now, you know, I know we're doing a show on, you know, uh, exercise, health and fitness. A lot of components go to it, but I want to get into the reasons, different reasons why people join. Give me a few reasons why people would join a gym. Well, you know. Or, or a fitness right, right, like, so say, like, when I am. Um, Going through this process of trying to um, open the gym, a lot of people would say to me, like, you really believe in yourself 100% right. to be able to do this. And what I truly believe in is fitness. I believe in, like, I'm one of, I, I really believe in fitness. I believe I can help people get fit. But I'm, I'm not one of those guys that, I, like, say if something breaks down, yeah. I'm not the guy to call to fix it, you know. Right, right. So it's not that I believe in myself in everything. But when you look at fitness, it's the one part of people's life very rarely do they say, I wish I didn't work out that year. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And, 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 and as a society, we keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And we look at all the reasons why, and what happens is there's a lot of different factors, but the bottom line is because of technology, most of us have left active jobs. Right. So you just have to make fitness a mandatory part of your life. Right. Now, the different reasons people join gyms, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but or add to it if you want, some do it to build muscle. Some do it to get healthy. Some do it to rehab, maybe. Mm -hmm. Some do it to clear their heads, yep. like me. That's right. why I come to right. a gym. Uh, you know, just, some do it just to get a healthier lifestyle. Right. Right. I mean, can you think of any other reasons why somebody might want to? Well, well think of it like this: if, if fitness, three things can happen to a body. Okay. It can stay the same, get worse, or get better. Right. But if fitness isn't part of your life. Yeah. There's no way your body's going to either stay the same or get worse. Right. And most likely get worse. Yeah. You know, as we get older, we lose strength. Oh, yeah. We lose flexibility. Right. We lose endurance. So the only way to prevent it is, is, is by working it. You know, and I think kind of like when you look at someone's fitness goals, when I built this gym, as you, as you come here, you pretty yeah. much every day. You see all different types of people. Oh, yeah. So it's not important, like, what someone's goals are. It's just important that... It's for everybody. It's for everybody. You know, and, and that's really the key with fitness. Okay. Now, uh, one of the reasons, would you, would you say this is a, a, an accurate statement? Uh, not only is it good for you physically, 
psychologically, it's got a lot of benefits, right? Huge. We know even like on the news um, the other day, they were talking about with, with Alzheimer's, yeah. how, how important fitness is part of it. Yeah. You know, when you look at like depression, um, fitness is the number one thing to help you with depression. Now that doesn't mean if you work out, you're not gonna have depression, right. but it's definitely a factor that, I agree. You know, it, it's so important. Now, and feel good about yourself. When you feel oh, better about yourself, like, like I said, whenever someone works out, they always feel better. So, what, so what happens, the better you feel about yourself, then you're more likely to treat the people you love or you work with or the everyday person better. Yeah. Now, I'm going to uh, uh, take a section. I'm just going to read it if it's okay to yeah. the people. Because a lot of people deal with uh, uh, stress. Yeah. That's a huge thing, whether it's family issues, money issues, job issues. Can't think of a better place to come to than attend a gym and a fitness right. center. But you wrote something in this book, and it's uh, in this book on uh, page uh, uh, 49, I believe. I'm just going to uh, uh, just read this if that's okay, yeah. right? Uh, there are a number of things you can consider that will reduce and manage stress. Nutrition, exercise, rediscovering your joy in life, talking with supportive friends, meditation, massage, Herb tea, especially with B vitamins and kava, kava added. Stress management training, hobbies, be sure it's something you really enjoy doing. Professional counseling and support groups. I mean, you write, you write this book, but then you add stuff like this. You know, to, uh, because it's such a big, I think it's such a big deal yeah. nowadays. But I was really impressed with that section because we deal with uh, depression in my family. You know, yeah. I've actually dealt with it myself. Yeah. And, uh, so it's like you hit it right on. No matter yeah. what you, you talk about in this book, you hit it. Well, you know, and I think people just don't understand depression. They'll say, like, look at all you have to look forward for. But, like, say, if, if you can't say it to someone that's going through depression. Right. It's like, if I hurt my back, no one's going to go to me if I'm complaining about my back. But, oh, look how good your shoulders feel. They're like, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know. So, so when they approach it like that, I just yeah. think it's wrong, you know. And, and, and I think so many times, like, we find all the different reasons not to exercise. Right. Yep. And, and it just can't be a choice. In the same respect, it's not gonna be the most important part of your day, but it's gonna be the one part of your, your day that's just unmovable, right. a mandatory part of your day. Now, when people join, you know, uh, and I'm gonna get into some t statistics in a minute that yeah. I kinda looked up. Uh, pe okay, let me, let me do that now, actually. I think I read somewhere, I, I could be wrong. Uh, I read somewhere, I think it was, uh, 16% of people belong to a gym or a fitness center right mm -hmm. now in the United States, all right? 12% increase in memberships in January. Mm -hmm. We all have this New Year's resolution that we it's want great, to do. It's a great reason to start for people. It's a great reason to start, okay? But, and I'm going to get into this. I want to uh, uh, focus on this. 90% uh, uh, of those people, supposedly now, quit after three months for some reason. It, that, that's, that's what the statistics that I read. It could be wrong, mm -hmm. but I mean, I know that, you know, a lot of people are known to join and some stay, but some just, you know, they can't. What do you think, what do you think the bis biggest mistake they make when they first join? Yeah. Is it maybe they're frustrated, they're not getting the results they see, they're sore, they're tired? Right, and that's why, like, I think kind of like, when you look at 90%, like, if it is that high, and it may be, I don't know. I don't know. But, but, but when you, you look at things, when you say it's 90%, that tells you one thing is people are setting unrealistic goals. Exactly. You know, and, and, and they're not being patient enough. Because right. I always said, like, like, when I work with people on the nutrition, I go, exercise is a big component of it. Obviously, I believe in exercise. I wouldn't open this, right? Yeah. But if your body would change by just exercise alone, even if you hated exercise, everyone would do it. So we're... we're, we're when people look at exercise, they're looking for immediate gratitude. It doesn't work that way. No. It's over a long time. It's internal, external. Then the other thing with it is when you look at that, when it says 90%, that tells you one thing. The fitness centers aren't doing a good job. Okay. Because, like, like, say if you're running anything and we had a 90% failure rate, right. you'd be like, okay, what are we doing wrong? If it's, you know, say if it's teacher had a 90% of her students right, were failing, right. you'd, find, you'd be like, yeah. okay, what is she not teaching? Yeah. And, and I think kind of like in the fitness industry, what, one thing that always bothers me is when they say, your ideal member is one that doesn't come. Right. I want to be a gym where, like, say if someone doesn't show up, we reach out to you and say, Andy, where have you been? Yeah. You know, because you've got to get people comfortable. Yeah. And then when people walk into a gym, especially a big gym, my gym's 
just under 28,000 square right. feet. So as you walk in, it's kind of intimidating. That's why throughout the gym, I put more windows. I wanted the highest ceilings so it didn't get claustrophobic. Exactly. But like what happens is you, you have to give people a reason to come and then they've got to be, they've got to be kind of like, like, part of my job's always been accountability. Okay. So if someone hasn't been to the gym, it's like, oh, I've been busy. Well, that's even more reason to get to the gym. If you're that busy, you better have your heart working good. Exactly. And Mike's the type of guy that will come out and greet you <laughs> when you're working out. He's done that yeah. to me. And he's helped me out with an injury that I had at yeah. work. He was showing me a certain yeah. way to, to do something that really helped me out. And yeah, and I want my staff to be really good. And, yeah. and I feel really good. Yeah. i got a really good staff. You do and, have a good staff. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're going to get better. We just, yeah. we just opened. So, yep. I got an idea about people. Tell me if this works, uh, about people like uh, not getting frustrated, maybe... A, you know, set good goals. Right. Don't don't overdo it. You know, you got to learn to sometimes to crawl before you walk. Right. You know, uh, find accountability. Yeah. Bring a friend with you. Bring bring a, somebody to work out with you. Even right. A, 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 exactly. But like even like if you, the one thing I love with fitness is even if you don't have a friend. Right. It's kind of one of those things, you can still do it with. Say if we're playing tennis. Oh yeah. You right. don't show up and like, geez, now I can't go play tennis. Yeah. You know. But when you look at a gym, it, it is all I think of a gym is a bunch of little communities. Yeah. You know, you got like the yoga community, right. you got like the CrossFit community, you got like the bodybuilders, the powerlifters. They're all little communities. And yeah. what I wanted to do is be one big community. There you go. You know, where you could do a workout and if your wife wanted to do yoga, she could do yoga. Yeah. And, and le learn to deal with setbacks. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. we're not all, we don't live in a perfect world. We're going to no. make mistakes. Maybe you got off a diet a little bit for a day or two, or maybe uh, we didn't have a good day uh, uh, lifting. We just skipped the gym for one day. Just don't quit right there, you, right? You can't, you know, no. because you're never winning and you're never losing. That's right. So you got to just keep working. it. Okay. Now let's get into the uh, training uh, a little bit. Yeah. When somebody comes into the gym and they, they want to start uh, lifting weights or, or get ex you know doing cardio or whatever, uh, I know it's not good to train the same body parts every day. Am I right? Right. Exactly. Alternate. Because when you're actually getting results, you're resting. Like, yeah. I basically train each body part once a week. But I do a lot of volume. Right. So, like, there's a number of different ways of training. You just have to find out, like, what's your schedule like? How much do you like training? And then cater it towards you. Right. And what are you doing it for? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And, and target. And, and, you know, there's a... Uh, and there's a proper way to do this, so you can get hurt if you're okay. not doing the right way, right? Oh, yeah. You see somebody yeah. like just jerking well, you, weights. You know, around. and I think kind of the difference is like, say when you do when you're young, you do things wrong and you might be sore, or a little tender. You do it, you get our age, Andy. All of a sudden, you hurt. Yeah. And an injury can really set you back. You exactly. And incorporate cardio, right, Dale? Oh yeah, cardio. That's important, well, isn't it? Like I remember at a young age, I started to do cardio pretty religiously. And I did bodybuilding shows without doing cardio because right. I'm more naturally a little guy. And then when I started doing cardio, I started saying, well, the most important muscle is your heart. Right, and, exactly. you know, when you look at, like, most of the things, even when I was young, as I've become more knowledgeable with nutrition and, and exercise and, and I studied it, you find most of the strokes happen to guys that are really high intense, yep. really stressed, and it's always right around 50. And dying is one thing, but having a stroke in living if you could prevent it by making your heart strong, it's just a, it's just like putting money in a retirement fund. You got it. Just makes yeah. sense. And doesn't uh, am I wrong in saying this, or uh, did I read somewhere that exercising and you know, like cardio and can can reverse heart disease? Absolutely, because when you do the cardio, it strengthens your heart. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so it's one of those things like where the heart will weaken. Um, it will get polluted, yeah. but it will unpollute itself. Exactly. Absolutely. So it's got so, so many benefits, you know. Absolutely. It's, it, there's so many benefits to this. Uh, but all that said, if you, if you worked out, you were serious, you did a lot of cardio, I'm not going to bring up establishment names for food, but you go home and you, you grab some fast food, yeah. you get some greasy yeah. fries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it sounds good. It's quick and busy. But yeah. you, nutrition, because you're huge on nutrition, yeah, that's I mean, a big deal, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, like, I think when you look at food is, like, like when, you know, like, say you talk to someone and say, God, you get greasy fries and hamburger. To me, I just think, God, would I feel awful if I put that in my body? Yeah. You know, but it's kind of like, say, like, it's all relevant. Say if you got home and you had 
cigarettes in a 12 pack, if your body's used to it, that's what it's gonna crave. So, so you have to retrain your body, and then you have to realize you're not giving up things because once you pass up the food, you never wake up and go, oh, I wish I ate bad last night. Oh, yeah, right. But you right. just got to break the habit. Yeah. And, we, and the bottom line is society, we have very bad habits because exercise, they're looking for quick fix. Well, nutrition, they expect to eat, eat a, a salad and a chicken for one day and be lean. It doesn't work that way. It's no. over time. No. Yeah. I tried it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you look great. I think I'm like, part of it, too, with the nutrition is establishing a lifestyle you want to live. Yeah. But understanding if you really want to see your body change, you really want to see it feel good, the cleaner you eat, the cleaner you live, oh, yeah. the better results. Oh, it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Uh, you know, I want to talk about the, uh, uh, I know I, I mentioned the weights, about starting to work out. You've got all kinds of age, you got age groups everywhere, right? All kinds. But is it too young to start lifting weights at a certain age? What do you recommend you start uh, lifting weights at? You see, I think... Fitness has to be incorporated at a young age. So instead of having like a daycare, yeah. we have like a kid's fitness zone. Okay. It's basically ages 3 to 11, where you start teaching like more body weight exercises. Yeah. Then nowadays you're looking at like kids. The idea that like if you lift too heavy when you're young, you're going to stunt your growth isn't really true, but it has to be under proper supervision. Okay. But you have to make sure you don't do too much when you're young because you got to give your body time to recover. Yeah. And, and you don't want to do things where... You're putting too much pressure on your joints because they're growing. And right. nowadays, I think you have like athletes doing a lot more competitive sports, playing sports all yeah. year. That's why you're seeing young people with ACL injuries, Tommy John injury. Tommy John injury. Because now they're throwing, you know, at 13. Yeah. Because they're, they're basically throwing too many innings. You never see that. You never saw that years ago. No, but we see, played I... baseball, and how many games did we have? Right. Handful. That's true. Now they play 150 yeah. games, yeah. some of them, you know? Yeah. So it's just totally different. It is. It's a different yeah. world. It's like everything gets pushed too. Everybody mm -hmm. gets pushed into things. So uh, now let's talk about this place as far as uh, the average gym or fitness center or health center, or whatever you want to call where you go. Uh, as far as talk about the different segments of equipment, the different yeah. places that you have, because we're going to yeah. take a walk in a little yeah. bit. Well, when I designed the gym, I wanted it to be kind of an open gym. So okay. say like, like if all of a sudden you're doing cardio and Let's say your kids are doing like a CrossFit workout and you know, you get your grandkids are in a, the little kids zone area. It's kind of cool to watch them all, you know? And, and I always think kind of like, or like say someone like myself, like I'm not much of a class boot camp person. But if I'm watching a boot camp, I might be more likely to try it right. as you watch it, you know? Yeah. And then I always think kind of like so many times people say, well, you know, lifting, in any gym, you got to get people comfortable. So I've got kind of like the selectorized equipment, which is basically life fitness. I try to buy the equipments that don't have many adjustments. Okay. Because, when, like, say when someone says, well, this is real easy to use. Well, not if you've never been in it. Exactly. You know, and, and now, you know, with the cardio, we got all the high-tech part. Like, you got the televisions, you got the touch screen. Right. But until you get used to it, it's a little awkward. But you got you'll get like uh, all your cardio equipment. Yeah. Uh, your, your, your treadmills and your. Yeah, uh, we get about 88 cardio pieces. Okay. So we got like a wide range, every type. We got type if you just had hip replacement too, if you were a, yep. um, a, an Olympic runner. We we've got everything. You've got the uh, you know the stretching areas where you get Good. the mats. Yeah. Uh, you've got the dumbbells uh, yep. set up the free weights I call them mm -hmm. with Smith machines. Smith front, machines free which weights. Which is yep. like well, you, you get some help there, right? Yeah. You want to Oh yeah, it's a little bit easier. Yep. Doing things. You got universal set. We got yeah. We got like the the hammer equipment. We have yeah. um, we and then we got the robe for all the open lifting style. Right. right. Olympic lifts. Yeah. So really, it, it everybody. Yeah. You get something for everybody. Yeah. Here, yeah. It? I tried to put in mind like, if you want to do a particular workout, you can do it right here. We have it all for you. You do. You have yep. a turf area which we're going to walk yep. on. Yeah. In a condition. Minute. Yeah. Uh, I like the speed bag. I grew up in a boxing family, so yeah. I like the speed bag. I go in, I don't yeah. hit it like, you know, like Sugar Ray Leonard, but I, I do yeah. I do hit it around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you got, like, you know, I mentioned the turf area. You've got, there's just, oh, you got different classes. You got different, different classes. Different have, rooms for different things We have aerobic classes. On, right? We have spin. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have a Dr. Prone on. He, he basically does the Botox and the cool scalp okay. thing. We have uh, Dr. Jess Mead. He's a chiropractor. We have Whitney Bean, who's a massage therapist. Yeah. So we have a lot of different services. Too. A lot of things going on here, I'll yes. tell you. 
Now, let me ask you this. Uh, getting close to wrapping it up so we can take a walk on the turf yeah. uh, as far as the gym goes. But do you think nowadays, I'm not trying to make excuses for people, but, you know, just the way we're all uh, uh, programmed now, with not just social media, but you got tablets, yeah. you got phones, you got video games, you got, do you think that a lot of that stuff takes away from somebody wanting to get out and doing fitness? Yes. I, I, I think, because, like, when you, you have limited time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of times with my clients, I've had to say like, well, if Facebook was a treadmill, you'd be very lean, you know, because they don't have time to work out, but they're always on Facebook, you know? And, and I think sometimes when so many people post their workouts, it's, it's good, it's bad, it's indifferent. But all those reasons why, if those people really wanted to work out, they wouldn't be on Facebook for their workout, you know? And that's what it comes down to. You have to really want to yeah, be healthy yeah. and fit, exactly. you know, because you can always come up with a reason like, I, you know, so many times people go, well, I don't like gyms because I see people post in their workouts. Yeah, but you don't want to like a gym. Yeah. You know, like you could take anything and decide you don't want it by yeah. and find a reason. You know, I, I can come up with a hundred excuses not to be here. Yeah. I really can. Yeah. But I leave work, I'm coming by, my car just takes a right turn on Hagas <laughs> Parkway. You know, I don't even think about it anymore. I got like a GPS set from see, here to here. Well, I think like once it becomes your regimen, yeah. then it's unconditional part of your life. And, it, and when you don't come, it's almost like skip, missing school. Yeah, or yeah. missing work. You, you, know, feel, you feel right. a little bit guilty. You exactly. Feel, am I right? Because, you know, and it's one of those things that truly will make your life better. Oh, I, I agree 100%. Going. You know what? I, I think uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going we're gonna to go on that turf. And Perfect. We're going to take a couple pictures, and we're going to uh, finish up a little bit, okay? Perfect. That sounds great. All right. Okay, we're back. We promised you a little, uh, little section. You can see a lot going on here. I'll tell you, Mike, uh, if, that doesn't, if that doesn't encourage people, what we just talked about, all the knowledge that you have and the, and the center that you have here, whether any fitness center people want to go to or any gym or health club, uh, I don't know what's going to get them out there unless we just take the old like vaudeville act with the hook yeah. and bring them in. You don't want to do that because, like you said, you got to do this for yourself. You right? want to do it, absolutely. You got to want to do it. So, uh, you know, as we hit the 2020 mark here, uh, it's a new year, a new beginning for a lot of people, I right? I love that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know what? You know, there's an old saying: Why is your rearview mirror bigger than your? I mean, why is your windshield bigger than your rearview mirror? Because where you're going is is a lot more important than where you've been. Absolutely. Am I right? So true. Okay, so why don't you give the people some words of encouragement about fitness for 2020? Well, I just think no one ever looks back at a year and wishes they didn't exercise that year. If you make it a mandatory part of the, of the year, hopefully then it will carry into the next year. And you just have to make it one of those unconditional parts of your life. And you set up with a realistic goal, whether it's 30 minutes of cardio four days a week, lifting a couple times a week for 20 minutes, Whatever your goals are, just make sure you hit those goals before you set another goal. I couldn't say that any better, I'll tell you. Hey, we're gonna wrap things up. It's been a lot of fun. First, I wanna thank Mike Foley Appreciate for you. Uh, coming on and his staff here and uh, being so accommodating to us. And, uh, you know, we wish you nothing but the best. Well, I appreciate you. Thank we, you. We, we've got the best here. <laughs> and if you wanna come here, you're, you're very welcome. And Mike's gonna Always personally welcome. greet you. I can not guarantee you here and there. Uh, listen, I want to thank the, the people who do all the hard work, too. Aaron Scott and Jeff Scott made this time possible for us to be here at, uh, taping this at the fitness center here in Scarborough. My name's Andy Poirier. I've been watching Talking Sports uh, 2020. Uh, good luck and uh, good health. Good health. All right. So long, everyone. <laughs>